first is their, the, I thought we would start with the barley wine and then move on to the Russian Imperial Stout since it also has coffee. It probably doesn't matter which order you do them. In fact, you probably shouldn't do them in order, but we're professionals, Jeremy. So yep. we'll take Somebody, one. We'll somebody's got to do it. We'll take one for all of you. Take one for the team. Team beer. Well, that's kind of got a nice color. What would you say, like a medium gold color? What would you yeah. What would you call that? Orangey. Orangey. Yeah. I don't know. One of those lines. I can smell the bourbon barrel, and I have not put my nose in the glass. You can smell the wood already. I'm like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, you yeah. know, from out here, I can smell the vanilla. Uh, yeah, really, really. I, I get big more vanilla, vanilla than I get uh, the kind of the bourbony. You know, I mean, there's yeah. a little bit of bourbon quality to it, but I'm getting a lot of the, the vanilla from the oak more mm. than the than the bourbon. Yeah, because when you go, oh yeah, when you yeah. go in then, the bourbon, then the bourbon shows the bourbon up. Bourbon yeah, and there actually, it is. It, it's fun. I'm actually picking up a little bit. I'm actually picking up some of the some of the char on the wood. So you know, it's a, you know, some of the bourbon, but also. Still getting a little bit of the char on the wood, so you know some of these may have been some that were some younger bourbons that they got, so it still had a little bit of the char character left. Really complex nose. Holy cow! Is there a bunch of really wonderful things going oh, on? Oh yeah, yeah. Which, as we've talked about with barley wines, I would much rather spend time sniffing a barley wine than drinking one, and I expect to do that for a long time. And I keep going back to this one already mm -hmm. in terms of where's it going next. And after you get through the kind of the vanilla, the oak, the char you're talking about, and the bourbon, you are getting a lot of malt. There's a lot of really kind of sweet malt flavor that yeah, there's some, or aroma that comes yeah, there's through. There's some really neat depth of it as well. Um, you get some of the some of the aromatic malt, the mm -hmm. touch biscuity, um, a little bit of caramelization. It's quite pale, so I'm guessing that it's probably just pale malt and maybe just a little bit of. Something for character. Most of this is probably just from the extended boil and what they're picking up off the barrel, because you will pick up some color off the wood as oh, well. Oh, sure, of course. So have you tasted it yet, Jeremy? I haven't no. been brave enough to. I haven't wanted to. It's too much fun to smell. It's almost got a, that kind of graham crackery quality that you're talking yeah, about, you know, the, the, I, a little bit. Graham cracker. I was actually going with, like, fresh-made caramel. Oh, yeah, yeah. It reminds me of the one time I did that. Boy, does that make a mess in the kitchen. And you pour the, <laughs> you know, you pour the, you pour the, you pour the cold cream into the uh, hot sugar mixture and let it froth a little bit. And that, that aroma that comes out is a lot. You're more adventurous yeah. in the kitchen than I am, I'll tell you that. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Giggle juice. Holy. Yeah. Well, I think your car your analysis of a uh, of being caramel like it definitely shows up on the palate. It's yeah. definitely got that flavor profile. Oh, and the heat. <laughs> oh, all of a sudden you got there, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just kinda of warms up the yeah. back of the palate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the first taste you're just like, Oh, this is dense malt and really warm and fuzzy and oh, it's really warm and fuzzy. Just sort yeah. of takes Unlike the last beer, you, you can definitely feel the heat, heat yeah. on this one. The yeah. uh, the alcohol in this is is quite evident at this point in time, and my guess is is that this beer will age easily three to five years, no problem if it's well taken care of. There is a lot going on in this, and the alcohol is a little bit too forward right now. I mean, I can still feel the heat on yeah. the back of my yeah. tongue, like having you know, like having shots of you know well. Liquor that somebody insists on doing that sort of thing. Yeah. It's got almost that kind of heat on the back of the tongue. And, and that might be coming from the bourbon barrel, too, as Some of well, it could be know? that, but there's there's also just a lot of ethanol yeah. on its own. Yeah, I, I'm noticing, like, the back of the throat, you know, not so much on the palate, but kind of on its way down, like if you do a shot of Jägermeister or whatever, you yeah. know, it's like... <laughs> I was thinking more... I, was, I wasn't I was even thinking as nice as Jägermeister. I'm thinking, like, shots of well bourbon. Whew. But, wow. There's an interesting spice note as you go back to the aroma. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, not really a spice, it's an herb, and I can't quite place which one it is just yet, but there's like a, there's a really you know, nice ethereal little you know, herb sort of mm. thing going on in the background that's kind of bringing me back. It's you know, in the mint basil family sort of thing. There's just a little bit of that, but very, very subtle. Yeah, I would definitely say if you've got a uh, you've got a nice, cool, dark place to forget about these for a while, just date them because I don't. Oh, actually, yeah, they do. They did vintage and date the dated. labels, which is awesome. nice. So, yeah, this is the 2012, and I think this one 
One of these was one of these was bottled in January, and the other one was bottled in February. So <laughs> I think they're uh, pretty fresh out of the bottle. Oh yeah. Well, cheers, because I can't, don't dare <laughs> pour a little more of this one. Yeah. Cheers, Jeremy. Cheers. Thank you.